Hey, I just want to do this quick video on what to do if you don't like yourself. This might actually not be a quick video. It might be a little bit longer uh, than I anticipate, but it's not something worth rushing. Uh, I just received a message from a mother, and I'm not going to name her, it doesn't matter, but it's something a lot of people deal with, and I thought that instead of just responding to her in text and typing, uh, I, th I thought the answer would be good for everybody, or these answers. And so I wanted to share it with everybody because I think it could help a lot more people than just her. So I got this message and she says, uh, and I'm reading something over here, by the way, in case you see me looking off screen. And by the way, I'm not a mental health professional. I'm not anything like that, but I'm a guy who's been through some really bad stuff in my life. I've had to deal with identity issues and all this stuff. And I've learned a thing or two and I've surrounded myself with some really great people and been able to educate myself. So hopefully this will be helpful not just for this mother of a 10 year old, but for you. All right, so I got this message and it says, my almost 10 year old son, so he's nine years old, uh, was in a counseling session last week and told the counselor that there's nothing he likes about himself. That is heartbreaking. She said, it broke my heart. That is heartbreaking because I, I have an 11 year old son and I also have a, uh, an eight year old daughter who's about to be nine and so, I mean, what, what does a kid that, at that age even know enough about themselves to know if they like themselves or not? They're just, they're so close to their own thing. And we all do that when we're so close to our own thing. Uh, a lot of times we don't, we don't see the bigger picture. But she goes on and says, I know it's probably uh, in part because uh, he doesn't understand social cues as he's autistic. So again, that's an area that I'm no expert in. Um, but I think all, this all the same will, will be helpful. Uh, do you have any suggestions on how to help him see the amazing person he is? And first of all, everybody, everybody, everybody has gifts, talents, abilities, worth, and value as human beings. And a lot of times we're the only ones who think that we don't. Everybody else in the world can think we're the greatest, yet we don't believe that of our, ourselves. I remember Kevin Costner making this comment at, Whis at Whitney Houston's funeral. Whitney Houston, one of the most mega famous, uh, most popular singers of all time. And he said that, you know, to, to, to her, she was, uh, to the world, she was the greatest. Everyone thought the greatest ever, but she could never believe it herself. And, you know, she had some, some hard times that came on her, um, you know, in large part because of how she thought of herself. And so, uh, what, here's what I have to say to that though. It, the first thing is this expectation. Um, it's been said, I don't know who said it, but expectation is the mother of all disappointment. You know, we, we place unre unrealistic expectations on ourselves. And I think there's a, you know, there's an image of what we see as ideal. Like this is like the ideal, the perfection. But then over here, we see where we think we presently are. Not even where we presently are, where we think we presently are, which isn't actually always where we presently are, but as long as we think that's where we are, and we think we should be over here, somehow better in some way, shape, or form, there's always this void, there's always this gap, and there's always this feeling of not being good enough, because we have these expectations of ourselves that just aren't realistic, or we think we should be like other people are in certain ways, but we're not. And truthfully, we're not supposed to be the same as other people in certain ways in a lot of cases. All right. And so basically what it's coming down to is a comparison, comparing ourselves to where we think other people are. And social media is a big problem with this because everybody's Instagram, everybody's Facebook, everybody's TikTok, Snapchat, whatever the next thing is, it's all a highlight reel. I mean, we have idiots standing in front of Lamborghinis that they don't own telling people on their selfie smartphone that they're going to teach you how to build a seven-figure business, six figures in six months. They're standing in front of somebody else's mansion that they don't even own. That's the kind of world we live in. And then people reflect back on themselves, looking at the screen, then they think back internally and go, that person's so much younger than me. They're so much better than me. Uh, you know, could I ever be that? And they think there's this huge gap between you and them when a lot of times it's just a big lie. People are BSers. People are totally full of it. 
I mean, and so a big part of that, again, is comparing yourself to other people. The more important thing you should do, the more important thing is to compare yourself to the person you were yesterday. Who was I yesterday? How can I take one baby step today to be just a little bit better in some area of my life than I was yesterday? That is something you can be truly proud of, is being better than the person you used to be. And that could be in any area of life where you see a fault or a lack or a perceived void. How can I be better than I was yesterday? It doesn't have to be a big jump, just a baby step. Do something today that's just a baby step in the right direction that will make you a better person than you were yesterday. And do that every day. It's the little steps that make up the big journey. And so, again, comparing yourself to other people, it's a losing game. You will never win because there will always be somebody else out there that you'll believe to be bigger and better or more successful or whatever you want to call it. And there's plenty of people who are liars who will get on their social media again and show you that. And you know what? Even if they are actually better and they're not lying, maybe that's not your calling. Maybe that's not your destiny. Maybe that's not the place you're supposed to be. I think one of the greatest tragedies in our modern times especially is that people, they feel an inner tug uh, to go somewhere or to go in a certain direction or to do something, but then they think they're supposed to do something else. And so they follow that something else, that false self, that false thing, that imitator. And then they, they get frustrated when they, as they're pursuing it because they never reach it. And they're not any good at it because they weren't supposed to go that direction to begin with. And by the way, parents, a lot of parents do this to their kids all the time. Hey, dad couldn't make it to the college football team. Therefore, he's a hard ass to his high school kid to be the best Because he wants his kid to live out his dream. He wants to live vicariously through his kid who doesn't want to play football, for example. This happens all the time. You've got to go to that school. You've got to play that sport. You've got to be that thing. And then you wonder why they get to 45 and successful and they blow their own brains out or jump out a window. It's because they've literally been living a lie. If you are living to meet other people's expectations at the the expense of living the life that you feel truly called to live and do the things that you feel truly called to do, you are living a lie. And it's no wonder you don't like yourself. Now, this might, may or may not be the case for a 10-year-old, but the roots are there. So again, just become a little bit better of a person today than you were yesterday. That's something you can be proud of. The second piece of advice I'd have for this mother of this child who says he doesn't like anything about himself, is to have him tell you what he enjoys doing most. What does this kid truly enjoy? My son, who's 11 years old, loves drawing comics. And he is way better, way better than me. Like, legit. And he loves doing that. And he gets better the more he does it. I don't know if that would ever turn into a career anywhere. I don't know. But he's a kid. Explore it. I mean, I'm buying him books, I'm buying, I mean, drawing pads, all kinds of stuff. I'm equipping him because he's following the thing inside him that he feels led to do, that he loves to do. And every time he can compare, you know, his, if he wants to compare, he can, he can compare his drawings from six months ago to today. And you can see a noticeable improvement. And I can go, dude, you are getting so much better. And that feels good. And I'm not just blowing sunshine at him. He's legitimately getting better because every day he draws a little bit. And every time you do something, you get a little bit better. It's just natural. It doesn't matter what it is. Every time you do something, you get a little bit better. I never planned on becoming a public speaker, writing books, putting together speeches, doing all this stuff. But I've been doing it 12 years now, full time. I've given speeches thousands of times. Every time I got up and did it, I may not have been that good, but I got a little bit better every time. And you, you smooth off those rough edges you hone it, you get better. So my point is, you know, find a, this is something the, the mom can do for her 10 year old son. Find whatever that thing is your son likes or he loves to do and ask him, like find out what that thing is and then find somebody that's not you as his parents. There's just something about that. Sometimes when other people say something, it makes more sense 
then uh, when your parents say it or your spouse says it, for some reason it just works. That's my cat, by the way, whiskey. <laughs> and But find somebody who's not his parent that is really good at that thing he really enjoys and get him around that person. Get him around that person. Have that, try to see if that person can mentor him in any way, or at the very least, they'll just be an inspiration to him and they can aspire to go in that direction. When I first got into speaking, I had a mentor named Dave, Dave Reaver. He had done the things that I wanted to do. He had shared his story of being injured in, in, in war and had helped millions of people, done very well um, business-wise, was married to the same woman the whole time, great, successful, happily married. I wanted that. And so I got around the guy. You know, we became friends, and I learned, and every time I was around him, I got a little bit better. That's why I try to stay around good people. So who can you get around in your life that is better than you in the area that you, you feel called to, that you want to become better? Those people can help fine-tune you and hone you and smooth out the rough edges and get you smoother and quicker and wittier. Now, let's say you go, well, Brian, maybe you're saying, I don't have anyone for my son or you know, for me uh, locally or I don't know anybody there. I guarantee you can search YouTube. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff on the internet. You can search YouTube. Whatever that thing is, lady, that your son loves, help him just kind of see what it is. What does he do when he has nothing to do? What's he default to? You can go on YouTube and you can search and find probably a thousand people or thousands that do that thing that he can watch and follow along and he can develop a skill. I don't know about for women as much as men, but I know as human beings, when we're not making progress towards something meaningful, catch that by the way, if we're not making progress at least a little bit every day towards something meaningful, we often get depressed. We fall into a state of despair. We feel like life is meaningless. And then we say, well, well, I don't like myself because I'm not this and I'm not that. But if you find what he naturally tends to enjoy, even if you don't have a mentor in his life, just get on YouTube, like I said, and find somebody, find five people who's better than him at that, that is having fun doing that thing. And so he can get on and he can start learning and developing. If he's making progress towards something that matters to him, he's going to like himself a lot more. His confidence is going to go up. His abilities to do things is going to improve, and that, that overall is going to build into more self-confidence because he's, he's becoming better at something. He's making progress, and he's doing something he enjoys, and he can realize that there's actual value in that. So the third thing is to literally... Tell him he has unique gifts and abilities. I tell my kids this every day, not because I'm just trying to speak it to them and it's, they're not empty words. I mean it. I look them in the eye. I don't just say it casually. You know, when I see a gift in my kid, I tell them about that and I ask them about it. What do you like about that? You know, let, you know, what, what, have you, what are you doing lately with that? Let me see what you're doing. You know, encourage them to follow that, that internal interest uh, that he has. Maybe it's in your life. Follow that thing. You probably have something you wanted to do for a long time, but for whatever reason, you're not doing it and you're suffering because of it. Well, you're never going to be satisfied with yourself if you don't start pursuing that thing to some extent daily because for some reason it's in there and it's trying to get out of you. And if, if, you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll probably get there at some point. If you do know what I'm talking about, you know how important this is. So what's the action here? Well, I would say one thing he can do to just be a, what's one thing he can do every day to just be a, a tiny bit better at something he enjoys? Find what he enjoys doing and what can, what can you help him do every day to just be one little tiny bit better today than he was yesterday? That's something anybody can do. A tiny step is doable. It's easy. But over the long haul, it builds into something large and there's great benefit to that. So, what is his ideal? Help him take just baby steps in that direction toward the thing that he enjoys. It could be one or two things, but find just one thing. And how can you help him become better every day, making baby steps towards something, making progress towards something that matters? And do that in your own life as well. It's a game changer. Hope that was helpful for you.